Good afternoon, and welcome to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And we begin with the hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life, amen. We continue with Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, 
listen to your children Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 8. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the risen Lord Jesus the Christ. Today is Reformation Day here in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. The day that we remember that Martin Luther posted 95 arguments on a, the door in Wittenberg, Germany. And the funny thing about that is all he wanted to do was discuss those topics with somebody. And uh, it got him into a, a boatload of trouble. But when we think about Reformation Day, we have to think about change. And I think if we really look at the entire history of God's people... We've had change. If you start with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they, the story goes that they had it perfect, but then they ate from the wrong tree and things changed for them. Cain and Abel got upset with each other. Things changed for them. The world got upset with each other and God rains down a flood on us, and we have the story of Noah. So we have more change. The change of Abraham and Isaac, we've alluded to the uh, fact that the Jews of Jesus' time were descendants of Abraham, and those descendants of Abraham were in slavery, actually. You know, it's so foolish that these Jews say, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. Well, they were slaves in Egypt, and that changed their lives until Moses came along and freed them from that enslavement. So we've been people of change all throughout the entire history of our religion, going back to the days of Adam and Eve. And today, the biggest change that we talk about is the change that Martin Luther experienced with the Reformation and the other reformers bringing the word of God to the people. And maybe one of the biggest things that Martin Luther did, other than writing a lot of marvelous music and preaching and all that kind of stuff, is he translated the Bible into German. So the people had the Word of God in front of them. And from there, we have hoped, we have strived, we have worked our hardest to make sure that that Word of God stays in front of us. You know, we have many translations of the Bible. It's been translated into any language you could imagine, I would guess, and we keep trying to get better and better translations of it so that we think that we are better following the Word of, of God. And with that being said, I have no idea where I was going to go with that. Mm. Well, I know where I was going to go with it now. In our society today, though, we've had many, many, many changes. And uh, a lot of those changes have, have now taken us 
away from the Word of God. You know, when we have distractions that keep us from attending church on Sundays, you know, that's, that's a change that's definitely not for the better. And, uh, and in my sermon this morning, I, I mentioned a few of those statistics about how things have changed in the United States. Um, one study shows that people, if they attend church every four or five weeks, they have it in their mind that they are regular churchgoers. Regular churchgoers every four or five weeks. Attendance in the ELCA, 21% of our membership. And then this Pastor Paul Hoffman, who spent some time with us last weekend here in the Marion area. He lives in Seattle, Washington. And I was astounded when he said this. And he repeated it to the group that met on Monday then too. 90% of Seattle, Washington, is unchurched. They have absolutely no religious affiliation, no church affiliation at all. And I'll tell you what, you know, we talk to the different pastors in churches around here, and I wonder how close Marion may be to that 90%. I don't think we're at the 90%, but we may be astounded with, with what our percentage is. So I think what we need to do is really ask ourselves, do we need to change as a church? Are we doing something that just doesn't make sense? Somebody defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. And in a lot of ways, I think that's what we're doing, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting people to come. Our, this Pastor Hoffman spoke last week to us, and he said the, the Lutheran church is missing out on the two Bs that we used to have. We used to have boatloads of people coming over from Norway, coming over from Germany, coming over from Sweden, you know, and that was filling our pews. And then we used to have a lot of kids. So by birth, they were coming in. Um, and we're not having that anymore. Um, but another study says that the church is ready for growth. The church is ready for a change. This study says that here in the United States, people need three things. They need a feeling for community community, us together. They need spiritual moorings. They need some kind of relationship with God. And then third, they need to make a difference on the fringes. They need to be Christ-like and have that feeling that, oh, I worked in the food pantry today, I helped some people, and that makes me feel good, and that's the way I should do things. And the church can provide all three of those things. But I think the, the key to the church providing those three things is our story. And if you think about the story of Christianity, our story is the most incredible story in the world. <clears throat> Jesus Christ going to the cross, dying for our sins. And then on the third day, they look in the tomb, and he's not there. He has risen so that we can share in his resurrection, so that we can have eternal life. What we need to do now is embrace that story. Not think about necessarily that bleak picture of the church that we can paint for ourselves, but embrace that story. And I just read in the gospel lesson where Jesus tells us that we are slaves to sin, but he can make us free. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. 
And that freedom allows us to be more Christ-like, to go out there in the world and share this story. And I really like one of the speakers that I listened to this summer. I did not give him credit for it because he probably stole it from somebody else because he, he told me none of this stuff that I'm telling you all week long is anything new. But he mentioned that we need to embrace the church. We need to embrace that we are the church and that we have the same DNA as Jesus Christ. Jesus told us, I am the vine, you are the branches. So we are one body of Christ with Jesus Christ. And we know the power that Jesus Christ has, and that's the same power that we can have. So thanks be to God that God so loved the world. And that's as good as I can do off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let us share together in confessing our faith now using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for friends and neighbors and family. Teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Amen. Amen. Wonderful God, thank you for the trees and animals, for the sun and moon, and for the whole world you have made. Amen. Amen. Loving God, we know that you hear our prayers, and we ask you to take care of the people we love. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, thank you for this holy meal. May it help us to be more loving and to follow you more faithfully. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Earlier, Pastor Mark said these words over the bread and the wine. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Let us pray. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have fed us in a way our hearts can understand with the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Enliven us by your presence in this meal, that we may be your presence in the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And we close with a mighty fortress is our God, hymn 504. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.